Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about the private journal of a journey from Boston to New York, written by Sarah Campbell Knight. Now, before I go into some analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. So this work by Sarah Campbell Knight is very interesting. It's an account, a journal that really gives us a detailed look at her travel from Boston to New York. Now, a cousin of hers had passed away and she had to go to New York um, to make sure that everything got done right in, 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 in regards to property, you know, who gets this, who gets that. And so it's, it's pretty much business, you know, affairs that need to be taken care of after someone passes away. Um, so throughout her journey, she gives us detailed accounts of what it's like to travel uh, within the, the 17th century. Um, you know, Sarah Campbell Knight, she passed away uh, in the 18th century, early 18th century. Uh, and, um, you know, that time in, in, well, what we now know as the United States, um, th at that time from Massachusetts to New York, you, you know, you didn't have highways, you didn't have cars, you didn't have the, the railways, you didn't have, you know, all these things that we have to, to move quickly and, and just jump in your car and just drive across the United States, you know, in a couple of days, and, you know, at that time, if you want to get from state to state, even if it's like your neighboring state, it could take days, it could take weeks, it could take months. And this is the journey that Sarah Campbell Knight goes on. And, and, and really, when she took this ride, when she went to New York during this time, it was highly, highly unlikely for women to move about on their own because it was so dangerous. Because you have to think, this is in America. Uh, before, well, this is not even America. This is the colonies. There are wild Indians. There are wild animals. Um, you know, most of, of the land is, is, is wild. It's, it's just a few towns, a few settlements here and there. Uh, you have a lot of, of um, tribes that's moving around about and they're not exactly your friends. Um, she's going about this alone. She doesn't have anybody with her. She's just going about, she's taking guides. So whenever she reaches a town or, or a location, a settlement, she gets a person to kind of like guide her, a man to guide her from here to there, tell her, you know, where to go, what to do, um, tell her about the, the situation, how people live, how people live in the settlement. And she really documents just throughout this work. This is why this work of hers, this private journal is so interesting and so, um, you know, eye-opening is because it gave us a detailed view of early America, early Americas. You know, you're, you're not even talking about states or founding fathers or, or, you know, Puritans thinking about an America and these United States. No, these are just a bunch of people that came from Europe, that came from England, and you know you have settlements here and there, and they're trying their best to live amongst the Indians, um, trade, life, and all these types of things. Now, uh, so she gives us different accounts of slaves and 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 you know Native Americans, um, and one thing for me that was quite astonishing within this work that really made me think about this time is that you have the the Native American Indians. You know, they are living on the land. They see themselves as free. They're free. But also you have slaves. You have African slaves that have masters and owners. Uh, and also you have um, Puritans and settlers. And they're all living um, together. They're all coexisting. You know, the Indian is trading trying to make money, trying to make a living. The, the, the Puritans, the settlers are trying to do the same thing. They're slaves and everything. And so this was a very interesting time where it wasn't a country, you know, the, the, the settlements, the, the, the Puritans, the Indians, the slaves, it wasn't a, a country. It wasn't a, a set thing. It was just a group, different groups of people, different tribes, different uh, people in different statuses existing in America, 
And um, she gives us account of when, you know, uh, Indians and a, a white person and a slave would go to trial and how that would turn out. Um, she tells us about Connecticut and New Haven and how their laws and their customs are different from Boston. So she, she compares, um, Knight here, she compares Boston to Connecticut, to New Haven, to New York. Um, she tells us about the way in which the Indians and the, and the Africans, the way that they interact, which, you know, upon um, research for this, we can say that when we look deeper into American history, a lot of Native Americans were actually turned into slaves. It wasn't just African um, Africans who were turned into slaves in, in America. You also had Indians that were thought as less you know, as savages. And, and a lot of Indians were also turned into slaves during the slavery era in America. Um, it, you know, this is also often glossed over uh, in American history, but a lot of American Indians were actually turned into slaves, just like Africans were. So that brings about a lot of thinking of what that means. Uh, because usually in your history class, you hear of African slaves, but you never really hear about Native American slaves, and there were quite a good number of Native American slaves because, um, well, the Puritans, well, the Puritans or the early settlers, we'll call them, weren't exactly seeing eye to eye with the, the tribes that they found, in, uh, uh, you know, in the land of America. So that that's something that's to consider. So, you know, Sarah Campbell Knight, she really brings that into the forefront. She really makes us think about the relationship between these three different groups of people, slaves, you know, African-American slaves, Indians and, and their, you know, existence and their living amongst uh, the settlers and the settlers as well. Because the, the early settlers, they weren't going to try to go to war head to head with the Indians. There were a lot of, you know, a lot of Indian, millions of Indians in the Americas. Um, they were, at first, they were just living amongst the Indians, trading uh, with them. Um, you know, business uh, and the like. Um, and so that that is something that's documented within this journal that's very quite interesting. So Campbell Knight, she really takes it upon herself to give us a clear picture of all these different types of towns, um, how people take things seriously. She tells us about Connecticut and New Haven and how there's certain places in Connecticut and New Haven where, you know, um, the, the justices uh, or the judge of the town, they're very serious about Christianity. They're very serious about their rules and restrictions and laws that, you know, you could, you know, just for, you know, for some fun time merriment or teenagers just having fun, they can be severely punished. And, and the, the judges, um, their rulings were absolute. What they said went and, you know, and, and at that time, you know, you could be killed. You could be beaten. You could be whipped. Um, it wasn't, you know, the justice system that we have in America today. It's not exactly what existed during this time. So Campbell Knight gives us a lot of excerpts, a lot of, um, you know, examples of, of how these people lived. Um, for me, what was most most astonishing and what, you know, the, I really kept in mind here is the fact that there's no roads, you know, everybody's riding on horseback, you know, you're, you're, you're going for, for months, days, weeks, you know, just to go from Boston to New York. I mean, today from Boston to New York, we're talking about less than five hours driving. Um, you know, if you're driving fast, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's some people that can make it even faster. Um, so it, it's, it's just very, very, interesting what she tells us about within this work um how everything moves how you know you're, you're talking about you're thinking about weather you're thinking about rivers you're thinking about boats you're thinking about um trails and paths and and you know um stay you you have to stop you can't just drive or go straight through because there is no driving there is no highways there is no nothing it's just wilderness so every every time where she reaches a new settlement, she has to stop. She has to rest. And again, this type of travel, this 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 state to state travel, uh, was not expected of women um, within the seventeenth century. 
uh, it was not expected because women did not go that far and it was unsafe. And, and, I'm, and it's not, you know, to think that she's weak or anything. People died, men and women died going these distances. This, isn't, this has nothing to do with who's tougher, who's braver, men or, or w women. It, it really is the wilderness, the, the terrain, the traveling from Boston, from vast distances like this. You could die. You could die from illness. From, from being swept away in the river, from, from falling off your horse, from dying from a, an attack by some foreign body. Uh, it, it's very interesting how treacherous this type of travel was. Um, and so there's, there's several times where she had to stop, stay in a settlement, uh, and, and just, you know, regain her health. Wherever she reaches, wherever she goes, she usually gets a guide. She gets a local person, a local man to just, you know, guide her um, to the next settlement or to the next place so that, you know, they, you know, she can keep going. Um, so she tells us about everything in New York and um, in, in Connecticut, excuse me, um, how, you know, uh, Connecticut people live and people in New Haven and other places in Connecticut. And then she gets to New York. She, she compares the houses that are in New York to Boston, um, to the houses that are in Boston. She compares the people, how they live, how they talk, how they move about. She handles her business, and after all of that is handled, and she tells us the differences and how, uh, you know, how people move about in, in, in Boston, how people move about in Connecticut, in New Haven, in, in the different settlements, and also in New York. Then she goes back home to Boston, and she almost didn't make it back. Um, because again, the, ter the terrain is crazy. Um, just the traveling is just, it's just horrible. Um, ultimately she does make it back. Like there's an, and there's a situation where her, her horse died and she had to get another horse. I um, mean, she had to uh, cross water and boats and all these types of things that she had to go through, you know, as a woman, um, and, and especially during this age where again, um, people didn't live that long. I mean, it would be a miracle if you lived to your seventies, uh, because disease, uh, the wilderness, the, the 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 weather conditions all anything could take you out at that time and again the medical system i mean think about the the medical system that existed within the 17th century you know if you really got sick you're pretty much all done for if if they couldn't help you with some type of herbal medicine or some type of thing you were pretty much done for and in these types of journeys and travels you could probably catch any type of disease or illness um, so it was very brave of her to to go to New York to handle this this matter of family and and, and help out her uh, a cousin that passed away and and and, and settling the, the cousin's financial affairs. But she really put her life at risk, and in the end, she does make it back to her daughter and her family and her friends, and she gives us an, an account. She gives them an account of her experience, um, and and this journal. Lots of people have used it to really understand what life was like for the people who lived in America during this, this period, before America was even, before the Declaration of Independence, um, before 1776. Um, you know, it's like, it's, it's very shocking how the world was at the time in the Americas or in America, we can say. Um, so in terms of deeper meaning, uh, meaning, in terms of deeper analysis here, um, this, this journal really makes you think about the type of lives that people lived in the Americas, um, how fragile life is or was for them. You know, they didn't take life for granted. Um, these people were, 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 you know, Christians. They didn't mess around. They didn't play around. They, they knew their life was short. Their lives were really short. I'm talking about, you know, in their 50s and 60s. I mean, Sarah Campbell Knight, she died at 61. Um, and that's pretty old for that time. Um, so these are people that, that you know, you're for your 40s and 50s, you pretty much, you're, you're counting down your months because, you know, at any time you can go. Um, so people got married very young. They had kids. And then, you know, they try to live their lives as best as they can. And then they died. Um... So it's it's just quite extraordinary how they saw life. And also Sarah Campbell Knight, you can see that there's several points where, you know, it's it's a lot for her. It's a lot for her to process 
but the thing is that, you know, everything that she goes through, she documents it, she writes about it, and she gives us a detailed, um, 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 kind of like a detailed document. And, that, and that's one of the things that she was good at. That's one of the things that she was known for. Um, uh, you know, you know, her expertise in writing, um, and documenting things in business, um, and, and really this writing, she's really known for it because, um, you know, this is not a narrative, this is not a short story, this is not a novel, this is the real world, uh, real things that people had to go through, and the difficulties that people, the first settlers or the first people to America had to go through, um, to build America and to exist in, in this vast wilderness that they found in, in the Americas. Um, ultimately, she does make it back home, and, and this journal is, well, you know, she, she wrote it, it's preserved, and we still have it today to kind of reflect upon, um, well, what life was like, um, you know, just traveling, just going from one state, I mean, from, Bo again, this is from Boston to New York. Many businessmen, uh, many people um, just jump into their car and then just drive for a couple hours and they're they're you know from Boston to New York in a couple of hours um, for for Sarah Campbell Knight this was a world ending ground shaking event that almost took her life several times um, so very interesting very fascinating um, the perspective that this gives us is well it's it's enormous because well you know the it's not considered the same thing, you know, the, the, you know, going from New York to Florida these days, or just, you know, you know, a day or two in a car, if you just drive straight through. Um, so now, you know, you can drive from New York to California, um, from California to New York, and it's, it's nothing. You're just sitting in your nice car and you can just drive straight through. You find, you know, a place to rest here and there. But for Sarah Campbell Knight, again, this is putting your life on the line just by just in this time period, going from Boston to New York is literally putting your life on the line. So that perspective is, you know, it's shocking, it's refreshing because it's not what we see today. So that's what I had to say about this. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe and or comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.